This week, three sides of the coin. It's a little bit of horror with an H, a little bit of sci-fi, some classic monsters, a little Kiss, a little Ace Fraley, some Peter Chris, all sorts of cool stuff in this esoteric episode. Tommy? <laughs> Featuring Brian Stewart from Phantasm Media. This is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things KISS. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Three Sides of the Coin. I'm one of your three co-hosts, Michael Branvold. I'm here with Tommy Summers, Mark Cicchini. We're still all in the house. God, nothing's changed. It's like Groundhog Day every freaking day, isn't it? What are you going to do? going to get up and go it's sit Saturday on the lazy again. boy i'm changing out on my sleeping sweats and putting on my daytime sweats <laughs> that's about it that's about life um tommy got to give you a job again got any comments you want to read yeah i'm going to read two polar opposites on our show from this past week that's current now with uh, stefan and um russell Russell. Russell. So Patton Diorama says, Stefan was f- effing hilarious. He should do a speaking tour like Henry Rollins. Okay. Other side of the spectrum, Craig Johnson. I always loved the show, but this guest was horrible. So annoying, not funny at all. So it seems like you either love it or you hate it. And there's just no middle ground. And I... I, I told you guys this earlier today. I absolutely love the fact that we can be so polarizing with our episodes. And the, and, yeah. and and this this current one with Stefan is such a perfect example. Right out of the box, so many people commenting. They laughed so hard. Funniest episode we've ever done. Best episode we've ever done. They loved it. They loved him. And, you know, thank you. We need laughs in, in what we're going through right now. But then count one comment later, that was the worst show you've ever done. There was nothing funny about it. It was disgusting. I was bored. I'm not going to watch. I, I, this is the first episode of all your shows that I have not watched. <laughs> like, okay. That's, yeah, why, that, never know. that's why we don't cater the show to listener comments. It's impossible. It's impossible. We, the three of us, left that show laughing our asses off and had an incredible time. Yeah. So, therefore, we love the show, and it goes. It's just stupid humor. It's It was stupid yeah. humor. And, and, you know, like the one comment said, we really do need laughter and humor in a time like this. And we've actually gotten a couple comments from some people who have who've said that, you know, they're, they're medical professionals. They're on the front lines, um, first yeah, responders. Yeah, in fact, let's, let's do that one. Um, I don't know if I've got that one handy. Can you find it? Here, I'll, I'll, uh, you talk, I'll find it. Anyway, you know, just talking about how grateful they are to have the diversion from life. And, God, we all need that right now. We all need to remember to laugh to smile, to, to uh, I, you, you get mad at us. I don't care. You know, we all need to get emotions out is what we've got to do right now. Did you find uh, you know, it yet? I was, nope. I'm looking. I, I was joking with Michael earlier today. Yes. About that show. Well, I had to go ahead and read the comment, though. So go ahead and read it. Okay. So um, this message we received last week and I've, I've thought about it long enough that I can get through this and I'm going to come right out and tell you when Michael sent this to me I started bawling like a baby and I don't know if it's because of what we're all going through right now with this lockdown or you know some of it's just humanity but this made all of this worth it to me and and the thing I want to say before I read this is that a lot of people don't understand, and I don't expect you to, that this is something that that we do because we enjoy doing it. 
and when Michael and I started this, we never thought that people would care watch it. We didn't. Yeah, we yeah. we had we had no idea that anybody would give a crap. And and this is a bubble that we live in because we do this every week and we share it with you guys. We put it out on the, the internet and Mike, Michael puts it everywhere and you guys get to, to watch and react and comment, which is wonderful. It's, it's a blessing that I would have never expected, but it hasn't changed who I am as a person either. And so it's still us getting together a couple hours a week, talking about this stuff and then we move on with our lives it's literally nothing more than that i don't even grasp the concept of what we've created until we're somewhere like at a live show and you run into people that that listen but this has got to be one of the greatest comments i've ever received okay i've been listening to you guys religiously for years i'm a first responder I find solace and relaxation pausing and restarting your episodes in between hands-on with people uh, that have COVID-19 that I bring to many overflowing ERs. Many of the elderly that I brought in in the previous day end up dying alone in the chaos of an ER without any family members around because there are no visitors allowed. I don't have the heart to tell a family or a spouse of 50 years to say a good, a possible goodbye to their loved ones, since I know what the ultimate result may be. Here's a small appreciation as a thank you for putting out those episodes so I can try to take the focus off of the shell shock of my job, even if it's for less than a couple of minutes at a time in between. Anthony. Anthony, so, that, 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 that just hit all of us. Just... Right in the fucking face. Lisa, um, Lisa as well. We shared yep. that yes. stuff before. You know, I, I don't know. The fact that this goofy, silly, crazy little podcast can help people like Anthony get through, I can't imagine what he deals with on a daily basis. You know, leaves us speechless, humbled, grateful. I, you know, we could come up with countless words to describe it. It's just amazing. That, that And those of you that listen every week, that's just as important to us, literally, as, as what Anthony just shared. If we can make you smile, if we can make you laugh all the better, even if you get pissed at us, I'm actually happy about that because we're getting you to feel something other than whatever you're feeling dealing with this as as citizens of the world. This isn't just America. This is everyone around the globe. We're in 149 different co countries or something like that. Each and every single one of you guys is important to us. And all of your voices count. And I just wanted to say thank you to every one of you, not just Anthony, but it means the world. To me, that's why I do this. You know, so thank you. Yes, thank you so much. It, You know, never feel ashamed if you want to send a comment. I mean, it just, we we take it all very seriously. It means so and much I think to this us. Is, yeah, and I think this is another opportunity for us, again, to say to people who don't know. And I want you to share this with other Three Sides people. Because some of you guys are religious and watch it every week. And some of you tune in once every six months or once every three or four weeks. Or you wait till there's a guest coming on that you, whatever. It doesn't matter. You participate to the level that you want to participate. But a lot of people have missed this. Forget the haters we want is not a Three Sides thing. It is a kiss thing, meaning forget the haters, all of the people that are trying to tell you not to like the band, whether it be parents or spouses or friends, family members, people you went to school with, or other kiss fans who are telling you that if it's not the original four, or it's not the 80s lineup or whatever it is, it sucks. They're the haters. We won means all of us collectively, not the four of us, but all of us as fans, because our favorite band is still here, 40 plus years later, still touring and still out there and we're enjoying it. So we, as a community of KISS fans, won. That's what it means. Well stated. 
Good job. Um, yeah. All right. So real quick, before we get to this week's guest and crazy conversation, crazy esoteric conversation we had with him, um, did you guys happen to catch Paul's latest Facebook video performance from a couple of days yeah. ago? Where he sat yes, down and, and did and Making was, Love, Got to Choose, and what was the third song? Hotter Than Hell. Hotter Than Hell. But I was a little frustrated by it, I have to say, at the beginning. Because I can't believe that he actually had to explain himself. He was talking about how some people were complaining about it not being professional, or I don't remember what he said. But it was just like, he's doing something for the love of doing it. And how can it not be right? You know? And, and I just, I guess, again, it goes back to, there's always some asshole that's going to complain about yep. something, you know, that's a, other than that. I thought it was fantastic. I enjoyed it. it was I hope he does. So freaking cool. More. And, and, and in this particular one, he didn't sing. He just played his guitar. And yeah. I, I don't know for me, mainly because rock and roll over holds a very special spot in my heart. Hearing that, yeah. hearing him rip into making love, just with awesome. his guitar. Oh, I was just like, oh, oh my God, this is the coolest thing in the world. Keep doing this. Keep doing this. And yeah, I, you know, Paul. Yes, thank you so much for you know. They're they're not long. They're five minutes, ten minutes long little video yeah. clips, but they are so incredible. I mean, the you know, this will drive the. The hater is crazy. The twelve-year-old in me is shitting his pants, sitting there going, "That's freaking Paul Stanley, the star man, in his house, in his house, playing. Fucking cool, just the most yeah, cool thing." That's what, yeah. I just like I said, but that's the only thing that struck me about it that I didn't care for is that it's like you don't, have, you know. He knows this better than you, but he doesn't need to even mention that shit. You know, it's just like, fuck the people that complain. Just fuck them, you know, because he's bringing so much joy to so many people around the world. Just like anyone else who is doing a group thing where they're playing together or it's an individual or, or someone just coming on like D Snyder now is offering uh, free video messages to people. If you have a loved one who is in the hospital or dealing with the COVID-19 um, disease right now. So it's like, man, that's all good. There's, you, you can't, no one should have a right to complain about any of that. Did you see what Brian May is doing? It's so Brian May, what's he doing? He's doing um, sort of like what we've got here, three, four-person video chat, but he's playing guitar with fans. So he's getting fans nice. to come onto the video chat with him, and he's playing with them. That's awesome. I'm like, are there you, you go. fucking kidding me? You could get on and do a video performance with Brian May? Holy shit. Yeah, see, Tony, another Tony awesome. Iommi's having an auction to raise money for COVID stuff. He's selling some of his uh, class. Matter of fact, I'm 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 going to be checking into that pretty soon. <laughs> not 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 that Mark knows Tony. He's just going to I do the not. auction. Um, no, no, there. You know, regardless, it's not just Kiss, but go go check out some of your favorite musicians, performers, bands on Facebook. So many of them are starting to do these cool things. Because yeah. the Steve reality Martin's is they're, they're stuck in their houses just like everybody else. Might not be The difference rough. is they have talent. They have talent <laughs> and, you know, they have a few extra bedrooms so they can get away from the wife and the kids. Yeah. Um, but so many of them are doing cool video things. Yeah. Check them out. Go watch. Go follow them. And, and more importantly, if you're in any position... To support, e the, especially the smaller bands, do something to financially support them. Buy a T-shirt, yeah. buy a CD. Because um, I just heard one of the big heavy metal band uh, tour promoters is saying there's not going to be any tours until 2021. They're just, they're not even booking them for the rest of this year. These bands hey, you know, need my, that money. Uh, 
Uh, Metal Church's uh, new one drops Friday uh, from the vault. Get it, people. Yeah. Support yeah, this there's band. New, there's the, the new Blackfield Brides is out. The new In This Moment is out. Uh, you know, the Blackberry Smoke has something that's a newer a release. There's a lot of great new music out there. Go go support everybody and go buy give, something. Go, go give somebody 10 bucks. Trust me, yeah. it will mean so much right now to these mm-hmm. smaller bands that can't make a penny now touring. And maybe for well, the rest of out, this year. Yeah, check out our friend Rick Monroe who was on a yeah. while ago. Great country artist. He's doing a release and, and doing some stuff with some of his older material. Go check him out. They've been playing live on uh, Facebook. So get out there and support somebody. I don't care. We're who actually is. looking uh, into doing that. We were just talking about it the other day. I, I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, but our matter of fact, Spiro sent me uh, Spiro's doing the artwork for our album. And uh, I got the proof back today. So a uh, couple minor adjustments and uh, you'll be hearing all about it on here soon enough. But uh, my band's latest uh, the record will be out hopefully in the next month. Um, we were originally going to press vinyl, but matter of fact, I called Mike about it. I'm like, I couldn't find anybody that's fucking open. Yeah, and, some uh, of these plants are closed now. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put it out on, on Spotify and, and digital download and all that other stuff. But uh, you'll be hearing more about that, and hopefully you guys dig it. Um, you know, But again, this is a good time to check out new music. And I've been doing just that myself, um, especially uh, I'm fortunate, too. I, you know, I, I've been able to go to work. Um, but then again, it's just me by myself at my office. I take my truck there. I don't stop anywhere. And uh, I still have, you know, paperwork to do and insurance stuff to do. And I just go in for it. But much like you guys are saying earlier, I do have that solace. I have that couple hours, you know, by myself and I'm doing, uh, you know, <laughs> one of the things, unfortunately, is going after some of those, uh, I can get, I can't remember the name of the loan. I was just talking to my financial guy today, but uh, we're, I get the money and as long as my employees get it, I don't have to pay it back. Right. You know what I mean? that it, It's a payroll, it's a, it's a so, small business association, like payroll loan. Yes, yes. So I'm, I'm looking into that. That way my guys keep getting paid. And that's a good thing. And, um, you know, this is a, I tell you what, guys, you know, you talk about, you know, the Fords and the GMs and stuff, but the small businesses, man, everybody that I, you know, I, I work for, you know, the, the chain just and you guys know that stuff. I mean, it, from the yeah. gas station to the to the Home Depot that, it, you know, we're normally at every day and, you know, the coffee shop my guys would stop at it, just everybody's affected. Every, it's uh, literally every you know, single business is affected by this well and my friend john clifford who owns um a salon and a record store here in town he goes down to his salon every single day because he just needs to get out of the house and he's been making videos and they're so stupid they're funny so if you guys want to you know see some really funny shit look up john j-o-n clifford c-l-i-f-f-o-r-d on facebook the name of his salon is Hi-Fi, H-I-F-I Hair and Records. And he's been just doing, some of the videos are just, they're so dumb, they're funny. And then he's been doing some other stuff that's really comedic gold. It's brilliant. So get out there and support people. Even if you just send someone a note saying, hey, I appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, It means the world to everybody. So you don't even always have to necessarily purchase something. But reach out and tell people, thank you for doing this. Thank you for making me smile. Thank you for yeah. putting your music out on Spotify because I listen to it and it makes me happy. It, it goes a long way right now. I mean, before we hit the record button, you know, Mark was talking about how, you know, we're just a lot of, you're, we're finding a lot of good people in the world right now who just, you know, out of the blue, check in, say hi, send you a message. Um, it's By the way, I want to cool. say a shout out to Al- Albert. <laughs> Albert, uh, uh, da, 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 what the hell? Eric Alberti just got out. somebody that I've met through Kiss conventions and going on the Kiss cruise and and his lovely girlfriend and everything. He's on the road. He's a truck driver, one of those guys that supplies you with all your stuff. You know, every time you go to Walmart or whatever, he's one of them guys that that's driving across country to bring it to you. He's in his cab. He just called me because I just checking in on you, brother. 
God bless That's you. That's awesome. Well, and then when you guys go to the grocery stores, thank the clerk. Say thank you for being here today. Yeah, before we started, people... before we started, that's what I was telling telling these guys. I was like, "There's a lot of shit going on right now," but you know, I'm seeing, and I'm not, I'm not. It's not that I'm looking for it, looking for a silver lining, but I've seen some wonderful things, man. I've seen some of the best that our species, if you want to put it that way, it has to offer. I've seen a lot of human kindness, man. I've seen a lot of people reaching out, and it's a great thing. And I'm not here, you know, this the show isn't about that, but I, it's nice to see, you know. Right. And it's going to be, it is harder for, for some people more than others. Like, I think it's harder for Michael right now because he's got the, he's got a young daughter, Tuli, full of energy, like we talked about, and his lovely wife, Katrina. So the three of them are in a two-bedroom apartment, whereas some people have, a larger home, they have more space because they're living out in the country or whatever. So it's like, man, everybody, no matter where you're living, what you're doing, love to hear from other people just checking in. I think it's it's a great thing. So reach out and say hi to people you haven't spoken oh, to in a year. It goes a long way right now. It, it really does. You know, and like I said, thank people that are there at the store because they're taking a risk to make sure you can still get food, you know, and to put it into perspective, even though it's hard for all of us for varying reasons, man, look at Anne Frank, what she had to go through in the Holocaust or not the Holocaust, but well, that too, but her whole family in a 400 square foot room hiding from the Nazis for several years or, um, Nelson Mandela, who was in a cage for 26 years, and he came out and became the president of South Africa. I mean, there's some amazing things that you can read about that will inspire you. We will get through this. Amen. All right. So this week, we are joined by a returning guest. Brian Stewart from Phantasm Media is back. Talks about the KISS poster books, the new ones he's working on. Talks about Ace's poster book. Um, we even get into, surprisingly, surprisingly, a bit of a geeky sci-fi discussion. Star Wars and Doctor Who. And Mark <laughs> didn't fall asleep. Although he was fed already. By he the way, I will tell you, too, this, this episode started a little slow. And it got it got good as it went along. It had nothing to do with our guest. It was just us. I, I you know, as Mike said a few minutes ago, before we were having a pretty serious conversation before we started the show, and I think we were all a little, you know, caught up in the moment of it, talking it, about it, it, it can stuff. It can be, you know, and I'm not. Don't take this the wrong way because what we do here is not difficult or challenging, but it can be. Um, a bit difficult to get yourself psyched up and sit down and do this for a yeah. couple hours in the midst of everything that we've got to deal with here. I mean, I mean, literally my, you know, as we were recording, my wife is like texting me, when are you going to be done? Thule needs to get on the internet and she wants to play Minecraft because she's not using the internet while you're recording. You know, it's just, everything is a little different right now. I mean, I'm recording this in my daughter's bedroom. You know, I right. don't even have the kiss inspiration. I've got Jojo Siwa singing to me right in front. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, Thank so God you, I have the kiss cave. <laughs> that's true. Mark's got, always no, has I'll been in the kiss cave. What you, said, what you said a few minutes ago is absolutely true. I've, I've got an entire very large basement crammed to the gills with all kiss stuff that... I love going through and spending time with. I mean, I'm lucky. Don't think I don't get out of bed and thank God that I have that every day because, like Mike said, and a lot of people don't. A lot of people going out to the whatever, to the mall or going to the music store or going to play sports or that's their, you know, keeps them sane. Well, they can't do that now. So. I thank my lucky stars that I still get to, you know, do some of the things that I love to do and that can take my mind off of it. So I'm I'm the most grateful person in the world. So we've been like way too serious today. I, I it's it's hard just, not it's hard I, not to be though because it just always somehow everything that's going on is coming into everything in life. 
But yeah, I, 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 I get what I you're like saying. Let, let's get let's comparison. get to the it's kiss fun. talk. Let's get to the kiss yeah. talk. The geek talk. The the Universal Monsters. Mark gets excited about Universal Monsters mm-hmm. this week. Let it roll, Brian from Phantasm Media. Want to get your official three sides of the coin logo and shocker tee? Now you can. We ship worldwide. Get yours online at shop.threesidesofthecoin.com. So, three sides, we want to welcome back returning guest, appearance number two, I think. Brian Stewart from Phantasm Media and the Kiss Poster Books. Welcome back. Thanks Cheers. for having me again. Keep drinking online. Yeah, it's, I'm just having water right now, so no. it's going to be really boring. I'm not. I'm having a margarita. My, my, okay. as, as, as I'm walking in here with my bottle of margarita, my wife goes, so how much are you drinking a day now? And I go, enough that I don't remember. <laughs> I, I go for you. you I'm all. I'm already start. out of Bloody Mary mix. So what's that tell you? Exactly. We broke out the Bloody Marys on Saturday night. That was uh, that was a fun night. Anything to get through the day is what it comes down to. Right. Well, and you probably have it the worst of all of us because you have the young um, Gatuli at home, oh, and she's six, ball six, of energy. Six year old. She is just today, especially. She's just. Just bored and can't sit still and wants to and it's just like you know we're trying to work my wife and i are working from home and we're like we can't right. just go play your games by yourself yeah we're, yeah, give, we're, give, we're, we're giving you enough of this shit <laughs> we're, we're giving you permission to do nothing but sit on the couch and play your ipad don't complain <laughs> so brian tell us about the new book What's yes. going on? What's going on in the phantasm world? Uh, not a lot lately, as a matter of fact. No, um, we're still here. We're still working. Um, we just decided to actually do a remaster of the first two issues because not everybody is a poster fan. So my my thinking was obviously you don't have to buy everything we put out. So we took the best content from the first two, added some new content included some new smaller posters to extend the uh, page count. And uh, we put it back out with new cards because so many people like the cards. And uh, we did some new covers. I painted one. We did some new photos and then some stuff that I pulled out of the vault. Why don't you just release yeah, a series of trading cards? Um, that all falls under a licensing issue. The only way that we can do the cards is with the books. So do a series do a series of trading cards that when you buy it you get a free book. <laughs> That's also a way to do it. <laughs> so, Gene, Gene, Gene would appreciate the creativity in thinking about that. Right. Yeah, for sure. In, in addition to that, we're working on the third issue, and I've got a really great interview that we did with Gene that isn't really even so much an interview that it's almost more like a, just an extended conversation. It was, it went, we got away from the, uh, the standard stuff really quickly. I think everybody's going to enjoy it. We got into our parents and I mean, just all kinds of cool stuff. So it's not the standard uh, US interview. And then we've got a, a great, interview. I'm sorry. I said, that sounds great. I think, I think if people are really going to like it, I'm going to really try not to condense it down too much you know, a lot of times it's good with a long interview. You want to condense it down. Obviously, you pull out the ums and the uhs and that kind of stuff. But uh, there's so much esoterica in this one that I feel like I'm going to do it a little differently. Hold on, just Tommy. Just run it in entirety just to really have the personality in there. That was a big word. That, that deserves es- a fucking name. Es- esoteric? Esoterica. No. Well, I know, but he wasn't bragging about people he knows or shit he has. Yeah, so exactly. Mark you, get, Mark, you don't that get. Mark, you don't get to fucking fifty cent word. Mark, you don't get to change would, the I, rules on I the bell. Word, I would get the ding. Who's yeah, your friend in Kiss, Mark? Yeah, I've got <laughs> who? Who Who's was called? Who was, Mark? Who called you just before we hit the record button? <laughs> yeah. Who? Who? Come on. Who? Who? We end with a bunch of fucking owls. <laughs> it's 
that's the guy who 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 dropped in on the show last week. That's not who called today. Oh, really? Oh, it's okay. a well, it's so a different let's, celebrity let's friend. This a different angle. What what's the name of your boyfriend? <laughs> Stop. So, Brian, um, <laughs> <laughs> things were esoteric. <laughs> For esoteric, uh, dealing with esoterica, you know, I can conjugate that one. Isn't esoterica so, a stripper? <laughs> the audio yeah, she works Augies. I was just going to say, isn't esoterica a stripper? The world can only hope so. Because <laughs> the the beauty of that one is you never know what you're going to get, right? That's true. Mark likes it that so, way, though. Uh, and then we've got, uh, let's see, addition to that in number three. I'm trying to get back on track. So much esoterica around me to follow. I can chase rabbits. <laughs> uh, we've got um, other things as well. I'm, I've already lost my train of thought. Uh, Keith LaRue did a cool interview about all the stuff that Keith does leading up to the show with the fans to sort of give us an idea of the experience the fans have with the VIP, which is a really cool thing. You know, not everybody can do or would want to do, but the ones that do it, it's it's a really like a one in a lifetime, once in a lifetime opportunity. Hopefully there'll be more opportunities for those once in a lifetime opportunities and they'll all get to get back out on the road. You know, it's funny. The show that I was actually going to shoot next for the next issue was the show that was canceled that stopped the tour. And so, you know, it's like, I promise it wasn't my fault, though. <laughs> but of like, you know, of, of all nights, like, really? Really, guys? I mean, you know, how dare you, Corona? <laughs> <laughs> well, Corona killed the meet and greets at the show I went to. That was the first first show they, they canceled doing all photos and meeting fans. <laughs> oh, I wonder it? if that's yeah. going to happen again. You know, you know I, I, I was talking um, to some clients, and I think even my last music business podcast, about that. Uh, I would put money on the fact that VIP meet and greets for big artists, like the Kisses of the World, are no longer going to happen again. Because they don't, they don't have to have that money. It's it's great money for them to earn, but it's not making or oh, yeah. breaking their survival as a band to have a meet and greet. So it becomes right. a, it, it comes down to a matter of safety and health. And I got to imagine people like Kiss are going to go. No, nope, you know what? I'm not risking it. You know, we're 70 years old, health issues, medical issues. Don't need to have those meet and greets anymore and risk it. I've got a family, but. Right. The smaller bands that do need that money, what are they going to do? They have to do it. And that's, and that's the thing that the the music business has changed so much over the last you know decade or so. Because and, and let's be honest, we've all had this discussion before. But as soon as Napster hit and everybody started downloading and sharing files, album sales went to shit. Can I say yeah. that? Yes, yep. I did. Yeah. Yep. You can say shit, piss, cunt. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> we had we had Ted Nugent on here. You can say anything. Hell. Yay! Anything. I said it. So bands had to start relying more on merchandise, and and then eventually meet and greets, and obviously ticket prices went up. But it was all part of this animal sort of riding itself, and we all know this. I mean, yeah. you you have to write the balance somewhere. Because let's be honest, as much as entertainment is awesome, it is a business, and you you get you have to be paid to be an entertainer. You don't do this for your health. I mean, I wish I did; I'd be much healthier. But that was supposed to be a joke, and it really fell flat. I smile. These smart guys have no sense of humor. I smile. That I think I'm super funny. So. <laughs> Look, Brian, I think everybody's just so fucking stir-crazy over all this shit. It's oh, like we really are funny. so fucking stir-crazy. It's not even funny. You know, I was really proud of myself, though. We've been doing this. You put I pants on today? Not today. <laughs> but no, I have a dad that actually just went through a second bout of cancer, and because of the chemo, he had double pneumonia, and he's got lung issues now. And we took this 
this quarantine thing very seriously at the beginning. So we're up to almost a month of this because we're still looking on him. So I assure you, bat shit stir crazy, I got you. But okay. no, in the last month, I think I put pants on once. So I feel like I'm doing my part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, 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 I changed I between. I did want to ask you uh, about because, and this is, this is slightly off topic. But have you ever thought of doing anything kiss themed with the universal monsters? Because I like you, I love the universal. That was like my thing before I was into kiss. And I'm sure you saw, I don't know if it's a meme. It's pretty popular in the kiss world. The one where they, you know, and they should, I always thought that should have been the cover of monster. Of course they would have had to have licensed the that. Four, four monsters with the makeup. Yeah. I've seen that. With the, yeah, with, yeah, the, yeah. with the with the but if you ever you know just because I know you're really into all that as as am I um, sure, I'm not yeah. so much into horror or slasher but I I like the classic 40s monsters that's universal not monsters, the Freddy Krueger's yeah. not not that stuff I, I like oh, no. same yeah I was never a, I, I never really got Freddy I mean it was sort of the time that I was growing up but I, I didn't really. It just didn't do it for me. I like the Friday the 13th movies fine. Some of that stuff, but I was like, I loved Alien. You know, I love stuff like that. But Universal Monsters, I grew up on that and Hammer Horror. I was always sort of, even as a kid, looking at stuff that, you know, people older than me were into. So, you know, I, I landed sort of weird. But it's funny you mention that because we had a discussion about that probably a year or so ago. And um, there were other things sort of happening at the time and it wasn't the right time but that is actually a discussion that i that i had with gene and uh some of the licensing people but yeah well, the it, reason it, i it bring it up too, Brian, is because, yeah, oh, because of what they did with marvel you know i thought right. it would fit nice into that as well and i don't know how but that's why i yeah. talked to somebody like you who's into publishing and and all that right. stuff what you know what would what kind of thing could you envision with that like T-shirts. You know, and... I've I've really given this some thought, but I would actually take it a slightly different direction and really feed that fan fire. But there's been so many legal issues around this, and I think you, as I'm building, you'll understand. But you know, there's only certain versions of Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park that are out there. You know, that are that are legal because of so many, um, basically again, rabbits that had to be chased because of of rights and where rights and licensing fall in different territories, it became a convoluted mess. And that's why, to my understanding, there's not a proper standalone release. That's my understanding, based on the conversations I've had with Gene and their lawyers, because believe me, I've tried. But I always thought getting those rights and actually releasing a playset of Good Kiss, Evil Kiss, and all of the Universal-styled monsters and a, like a, a fun park playset would be the shit. Now you see, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> And play with that shit like Star Wars men. You know that. That's what I want. <laughs> you know, Brian. I, I've, I've been very vocal on this show about this. I, I, I am. I am it. not. I did not like the Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park. I did not like it. One of the reasons is because Frankenstein was more funny. The the the, the vampire Dracula part was. You know, it was almost a, a you know a wink wink nudge 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 sort of thing. Their Wolfman didn't didn't look like Lon Chaney Jr. You know what I mean? It's like that was one of the problems I had with the movie. I I well, that went back to the fact that Hanna Barbera was backing it, not Universal. No, no, no. I get that, but when you're 13, you don't know that stuff. You know what I mean? Well, because well, I, I was 13 when it came out. Free and entertainment, dude. What's wrong? No, What's that? Um, uh, no, I actually had a I had an entertainment law degree when I was twelve, so I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> but but so let's mature early. <laughs> yeah, well, I was like the Doogie Hauser of bullshit, you know. <laughs> they were like, "What are we going to do with this kid out in the middle of nowhere, Texas, that knows all this brilliant law shit?" Well, nothing, because it's all a lie. But no, I you know I totally understand that, and things like that used to bug me too. But I enjoyed the movie as a kid because I was just happy to see. You know, Gene Simmons picked shit and throw it and fake fire and the a talisman. I, I loved it. I was absolutely. Right. Of How the old age. were you? Did you see that when you, when it first came out? I mean, did you I watch did. it on, on I'm NBC? 45. I watched it um, when it came out. You know, I, I chose not to watch Cleopatra. I chose to watch, you know, Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park. 
Now, how, how old were you when you saw that? How old were you? Oh, some years younger than I am now. <laughs> <But I'm> not... <laughs> I just think at that age, I you know, at 13, <laughs> so, I was ready for something cooler. And that I was probably like, you know, five, what, five or six, I guess. Something yeah, that's like what that. I, mean, I mean. That's why I think some of the, the discrepancies. Yeah. I think that's part of the reason, too. Uh, being a teenager, I was expecting – that really was. That was really Hanna-Barbera, and it wasn't scary. Okay. There was I nothing. Mean, it was absolutely an episode of Scooby-Doo. Yeah. And, and it's funny because I love the Scooby-Doo thing, you know, the, the, the cartoon they did, because there was a lot of good humor in it. You know what I mean? It wasn't – Right. Like, I mean, Doc, they got, were, you know, the Doc parts were, were fantastic in that. They were funny. Oh, yeah. The Scooby-Doo was brilliant. And, you know, at the end of that, there were so many things pulled from classic Marvel comics that were little tips of the hat that were you know, all through that last 15 minutes that were just brilliant. If you're a 60s, 70s Marvel comics guy, and DC to an extent, but very heavily Jack Kirby pulled stuff. And it, there's so much great stuff in there. I think I could have said that with less words, but I chose to go more words so everybody would zone out. Mark, Mark, Mark needs more words. I do. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, and it, I suppose it's. It, I think what Mark was trying to say too is it really depends on the age. I guess I never really thought about it. I I just watched it and enjoyed it and kind of left it at that. Never really thought twice about it, you know. And and I wasn't interested in the first. 30 minutes of it or whatever. I was just sitting there going, okay, when are they coming on? When are they coming on? Right. You know? And, you yeah, know, it's funny, I mean, it sounds a little bit like you did feel like I, cause I was super excited for it. And, and I remember it put it this way. I didn't go to school on Monday going, boy, that sucked. Blah, blah, blah. All that other shit. Well, it's not Eric, but it's another former guest. So now I have to take this. So I will. <laughs> um, I was I was going to say, you know, as a kid, I loved it. But I also loved Hanna-Barbera and Sid and Marty Croft. You know, that that was my childhood. My Saturday mornings were Hanna-Barbera and, and Sid and Marty Croft. I never, as a kid, actually truly got into comic books. And I don't know why. Me neither. But I saw the Kiss Meets Phantom as... Look, I know this isn't real. I know it's all a joke. I know that going into this. I wasn't expecting Kiss to be real, you know, because yeah, right. Kiss, Kiss, first of all, even back then, I knew it wasn't really a demon, and it really wasn't a spaceman. It was a person under there. So, sure. you know, can, can he really breathe fire without the sword and everything else by just opening his... No, he can't. It's not like he's a dragon, which are real. <laughs> what, dragons aren't real? They Damn they it, are, this, aren't they? This sucks. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. No, no I mean, so, so I, you know, I, I never, I didn't get turned off by it. It was, I, it, all it was for me was, holy crap, it's Kiss. That's all it meant. Right, holy yeah. crap, Kiss is on and TV I, and I get to watch it. Yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. It's it's funny because you look back, you know, I've talked to Ace at length about the movie. And um, you know, he was like at, at the time, he didn't really, you know, from what I remember, didn't really love it. But now looking back on it, he's like, yeah, it was what it was, you know, and and Gene's like it was what it was. And so many but I think that goes back to everything. And let's be honest, it's we're, we're all fans of something, obviously yes, but other things too, and so many people take ownership of so many things that they're fans of. I mean, we could talk Star Wars all day and Star Wars fans, and I am a Star Wars fan, but there's clearly two types of Star Wars fans. You know, there just is. like there's... There's, the, honest, there's, no, there's no, the one... There's Star Wars fans who love Picard, and there's Star Wars fans that love Shatner. Right, and the ones that love Doctor Who as well. <laughs> nice. I just like gotta that. piss Good. off the Star Wars fans, okay? I, well, you know, I didn't yeah, even I think... know what... I didn't even know what Doctor Who was. And it's funny because Nicholas Buckland's a big Doctor Who fan. And yeah, I told him this story because I was, uh, I was, God, I was probably 18, 19. And uh, I did one of the, it was the first time I did one of these trips. I took my girlfriend 
and we told each other's parents we were uh, <laughs> we were going like to a Ted Nugent some, concert. So uh, <laughs> we ended up driving down to fucking Cedar Point. Um, they're not Cedar Point. We went to Cedar Point and Kings Island. What we did is we spent the weekend together. And what I what I did is we we got down to Kings Island. If you know, that's in Cincinnati, Ohio. And we're there, and I see. I I don't mean to be mean. This is, but this is exactly what it was. I saw all these very unattractive girls, very unattractive, and they were all wearing. Doctor Who t-shirts and buttons. Now keep in mind it's middle of fucking summer. They've got like these fucking scarves on with Doctor Who sh- and I had no idea what fucking Doctor Who was. And my and my girlfriend was like a year or two younger than me and I'm like, what the fuck is that? I don't even know what that is. So we went and I, we're sitting in line and I ask one of these pimply faced ugly girls, what the fuck is that? And I mean, I did it nice. And she explained to me that it was a TV show. And I'm like, I don't... You, you, I'm sorry. I don't mean, to, I can't help it. Pimply faced ugly girls, but you did it nice. I love that. I did do it nice. So I'm like, and they're like, it's a TV show. And I'm like, so <laughs> look, I'm, look. <laughs> I just couldn't believe that I'm in the middle of fucking Ohio in a hot summer day at an amusement park. With a woman. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, these, ding, ding. And all, and all these preteen, teenage girls, I could understand if it was like, you know, whatever was popular at the time. But it was Doctor Who. And, you know, I, we didn't have, you know, Google or anything. I didn't know what that was. And so years later, years later, I'm friends, you know, with Nicholas and he starts talking about, you know, pop culture stuff and how much you like Doctor Who. And I told him that story. So whenever we talk about stuff, I'll throw in the, you know, pimply face girls from Ohio thing. And he always gets a kick out of it. So Wasn't anyways, that like on PBS or something. Cause see, I'll go a step yeah. further yeah. with the Star Wars. Cause it was fans. a, B- it was a BBC show that you is would, that what it? I, I still don't know. I just know it yeah, wasn't. It, it, it was a BBC show. So th- thinking back, because timeline is so important, back then you didn't tune into the BBC channel because there was no BBC channel. You had basically three or four BBC. networks, and you had a PBS channel, and you had UHF channels. And sometimes the PBS station would broadcast some of these BBC shows. I remember. I remember Doctor Who and the original Hitchhiker's Guide. Yep, and Monty Python. And Monty Python, yep. yep. Oh, you only remember the goodies? The goodies were... Uh, were... All that uh, Python was all I watched. When I started oh, doing too. conventions years ago, I saw what I thought was this really shitty R2-D2 thing coming at me, and it started, you know, s- screaming at me, and somebody had to explain to me it was a, a Dalek? Dalek. A yep. Doctor Who... Yeah, Doctor Who robot. And I was like, I thought that was the shittiest R2-D2 of all time. <laughs> that, that, was, that was part of the, looking back now, the charm of those BBC s- series back then. The special effects were so bad. You think Chris Kiss Meets the Phantom had bad special effects. The BBC series had just the most hideous, hilarious terrible special effects and but the python those effects were perfect you know the flying exactly because it was a dumb show to start with it was about being stupid and humor but you've got a science fiction show like hitchhiker's guide or doctor who and it's like wait a second that dalek looks like a garbage can on wheels (laughs) which it probably was yeah Yeah. probably was well and, and i'll take it one step further i've never seen star wars no. No. Uh, wow. I just, it doesn't interest me. Huh? Or you, you? Say that again? Seen, no. You've never no. seen Star Wars to, to this day? To this day. None of the movies? None. Zero. Okay, let me, let me ask you. Oops, I'm sorry. So never seen Star Wars. Say, I'm Brian, I'm, you're breaking up, Brian. Say it again. <laughs> I'm just surprised that anybody's never seen Star Wars that's alive. 
Yeah, no, my wife hasn't either. Wow. There's only two movies anyway. One, well, and one then, in 77 and one in 80, and that's it. Well, and someone was having a debate about it online, and some friends of ours said they had a friend who gave them the whole series of all the movies. And she's like, we got 30 minutes into the first one, and I shut it off. Well, the first one meaning episode four, or the first one meaning number one? Because no, if no, number Mike, one was it, no movie. wonder they shut it off. There's two movies. Yeah. There was one in 77 and one in 80. There's no other movies. There's two okay. Star Wars movies. That's it. Okay. Well, the, what, I don't, and I can't answer so that. The first Mike, I don't one know. is 1977. The second one is 1980. Listen, That's we, it. We, we, we all know through the years, Mark so is the last mind, person you take sci-fi advice from. Carbonat, and that's it. I, I, Brian, I'm sorry. Say it again. I couldn't hear you. I, I was saying, so in his mind, Star Wars ends with Han Solo and Carbonite, and then that's the end. Sure. Since there's only two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Works for well, me. And, 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 but let me say something. I get that people love these things. I, I get it. I just, I'm not... I don't like those types of movies. You know, I didn't watch Star Trek either. So I went, I much rather would go see Dirty Harry, uh, Scarface, um, you know, stuff like that. That was the stuff that I enjoy seeing. So Broke I missed Mountain. all of that as a kid. <laughs> huh? Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> that was later. <laughs> Deliverance. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, so, you know, because my, my brother worked in a he was older than me and he worked in a, a theater and my mom and dad would drop me off on a saturday at noon and i'd be there all day and i'd see all three movies that they had going at the time so i saw so many 70s movies and it was always stuff like you know um three days of the condor and and um you know the odessa files uh, papillon and that kind of thing but they all great movies for yeah. sure yeah yeah and I'm not saying that Star Wars isn't great. I just, it doesn't I, really. I just don't know how you can get through life without even, I don't know, accidentally watching a Star Wars movie at this point. Well, right. I mean, well, it'd be similar accidentally watching a, a late night show on, on Skinamax. You know, I mean, I don't know how that happened. I mean, you would think you would star, you'd get Star Wars the same way. Well, but you know what? But wasn't, correct me if I'm wrong here, but wasn't Star Wars one of those films that they really held it back for a long time? I remember working in a video store in the 80s and, and they came out on video and that was a really big deal. But like you never saw it on broadcast television, right? Or is that not correct? Um, Lucas was protective of the, of the way and when it was released every time it was released. Right, so the only way I would see it accidentally is if it was on regular television. But I but 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 that. even now, Tommy, even now in 2020, when you're quarantined, aren't you so bored to some extent that you're like, okay, I'm gonna watch Star Wars. I've watched every other movie. My wife has me working so hard fixing shit. No, but I do. I did. I got to tell you this. I watched The Tiger King. And that shit is awesome. I loved it. We, yeah, and I don't, we started I don't and didn't stop till it was over. At all. And yes. I and just try 20 minutes of the first episode. And we started at about 9.30 one night. I swear to God, we watched the whole freaking That's thing. That's what we did, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it, it was like the Kramer. You, you, it was you can't look away. I, you yes. couldn't look away. And I, I it was like, just, I'm glad to watch the busload of people burn and I can't help it. I want to help them, but I can't. I just have to yeah. watch. Yeah. <laughs> and so like with Star Wars, let's say there was only a handful of choices. I probably would end up seeing it. But when you have Netflix and Amazon and all these others, it's like, God, there are so many incredible shows and series and movies and documentaries. I watched a documentary the other night called The Falling Man about the, the guy who was taking pictures of 9-11 and this uh, person who leaped to their death. And it was almost like the perfect picture. And they go through the whole process of finding who that falling man was. And it was just fascinating. On a but wow. much better note, did you guys see The Wrecking Crew? The, uh, yeah, the, yes. The, the muscle Shoals. Well, there's a Muscle Shoals one, and then there's one. Oh, then that, there's a Wrecking Crew. 
I think so. That's been out for a while, hasn't it? Yeah, it, it has. But dude, I watch so few movies; it's not funny. And right. and that that was fucking incredible. That's Couldn't awesome. Believe how good it was. If you, if you want a good one, it's on Netflix. The new ZZ Top documentary. Yeah, I saw I heard that. that. Really good. I'm not a huge ZZ Top fan, but I loved it. I learned so much and total respect to those three guys, man. Well, and anything that's music like that, I'll watch. You know? So, like I oh, said... Oh, though, I, by the way, also, a lot of KISS content. Did you guys see the Rainbow documentary? Nope. Gene, Gene Simmons is in it a, in it a ton. Um, I did that not. is really good. Uh, Rainbow, it's about the, the Rainbow Bar Rainbow? Grill. What's that? The band Rainbow? The Rainbow Bar, Bar and Grill. Oh, and Rainbow LA. Bar and Grill. Done. Is it what, what, is it on Netflix? Really like is it on Netflix? Um, I think it was Amazon Prime. I will okay. have to check this I'll check out. That out. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, I uh, I hadn't been to L.A. in forever, and we were there a few months ago, and going down Sunset was just depressing. It's gone. It's so it was so bizarre to me. I hadn't been in years, you know, to L.A. and uh, from some for some reason, all the traveling I do, it, I always manage to not go to L.A. for like almost 10 years. And then it was like a whole new world. It was weird. Yeah, it's so, changed dramatically from back in the day. Well, they talk about yeah. that in the movie because they want to tear the tear the bar down and the, you know, the Roxy and all that. And they want to put high rises up there. So. Well, it's all this left anyway. I mean, you know, really. It was so bizarre. Yeah. Um, that's all I got. Well, it's great having you. <laughs> <laughs> As Mark would say, look at the time. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's all I have for sunset. Sorry. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> I'll talk all the kiss you want. Or not, or not Star Wars. Or whatever. I don't care. <laughs> I'm happy to talk about it. I just don't have much to add. I've seen a few of the Star Trek shows, though. A few episodes, maybe a handful. Troubles with Tribbles. I like that. <laughs> that was Troubles good. With... Is there Star something like that? The original Star Trek just sucked, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm. I'm it, was, it was like what? watching a Doctor Who. What? The effects were just so bad. Right. See, whereas I could sit and watch MASH reruns 24 hours a day. Oh, that and I never could do. get tired yep. of it. Ever. The Colonel Flag episodes. Oh. Brilliant. You remember in the, the MASH film, um, the football scene. Did you know that that football scene was actually directed by Andy Sedaris? He was the guy that directed ABC Wide World of Sports and Monday Night Football and the Olympics in the 60s for ABC. Oh, cool. They actually put him in that so it would look more like a real football game. And oh, Andy later... It's weird. I, you know, I know it's. I, I know weird shit. But I used to work for Andy. Actually, he uh, ended up making a lot of these late night B films with a lot of penthouse pets and Playboy playmates. But back in the day, he was a sports guy. So, but speaking of Mash, there's my contribution. But have what you, you won't find credited for it. Have you? And that was always. That was always a sore spot with him. Have you guys seen the really? recent M Mash meme that's going around saying? <laughs> We need to get radar on the phone because in one phone call, radar could get all the medical supplies and a case of scotch that we need. <laughs> nice. <laughs> wow. Oh. All right. So, Brian. Um, yes, sir. What's all right? So, Kit, you you you're do you've done you're doing Kiss poster books, remastered versions of them. Are you going to uh, venture back into non-KISS poster books for ex-members of the band? Um, Back into? Maybe. Uh, you know, we did that Ace issue. I'm playing with this little clip. It's so much fun. You should have one. Um, we did Mark the Ace does. Issue he wears it. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and the, the Ace issue, I think, turned out pretty well. And... Um, there was enough of a response that we made it back into that well. Um, it was great. I thought it was wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, to be honest, and this, 
this is going to sound like I'm saying it as a sales pitch, but it's really not. Everything that we we create, I really try to create something that I would want to buy. And if I spent this much money on it, however much the price point is, yep. would I be happy with it? And yep. that that's how I approach it. And I definitely approach it with a lot of, I hate to say it, but love. I mean, because I'm really, if I'm going to put my name on it, I want it to be as good as I'm capable of making. And also want people to spend their money on it and go, hey, thank you. This is great. I'll buy another. Not, hey, asshole, this is really cheap and you suck. Which, luckily, I haven't gotten that one yet. So, so far, so good. But I was really pleased with the Ace that we had, you know, the Ace magazine. And it's like Ghostbusters. You know, with Ace and Kiss, you definitely don't want to cross the strings. So, if you've seen Ghostbusters, I know you haven't seen Star Wars, but that was a joke. So. I get it. (laughs) Yay! Ghostbusters, yes, once, I think. (laughs) Sorry. um, (laughs) We've talked about doing other stuff. Um, as far as music, there are definitely other um, bands and individuals we've talked to. Some are KISS related. Some are sort of, I guess you could probably find that KISS family tree tie. And some are not whatsoever. And of course, we're still going to do a little more horror here and there. But that's where we are right now. But as far as inside the, the KISS world, we are going to be doing a few more KISS products this year. Hopefully this year, if we're able to, you know, print and manufacture, obviously. Yeah. But we've got some some opportunities to do some other stuff. I mean, it's nothing groundbreaking, but it's stuff that I went after that I thought would be fun from almost like uh, when I was a kid. I was into Kiss, and I loved all the little things that you could find. And I wanted to do Kiss stickers. And so we're going to do Kiss stickers. And we're going to do some prints, and I'm going to paint some new photos, you know, We're going to release some of my photos that I've taken. I'm going to paint some new stuff and we're going to release some prints and things like that. But for some reason, I just really had this desire to do kiss stickers. I know it's not like a huge groundbreaking thing, but I thought it'd be fun to design some drawn stickers that were very much of the 70s. And that's so that's what we're doing. And of course, more poster books, stuff like that. Well, and I think it's great that you're doing what you're doing because, you know, the fans want to collect stuff. And if the band isn't putting a lot of stuff out, you, you, why not? You know, I don't know. I, I think it's great that you're doing it. Well, thank you. And yeah. it's fun. And I'm sure if, if I'm going to do something, obviously from a business standpoint, you don't want to, number one, lose money ever, but you want to make money if you can. And I also want to have fun doing it. And I know that's not, always the way to look at business but for me if i'm not having fun doing it i could probably find something else i could be doing and put the same amount of effort and hopefully showcase what little talent i have in a better way and make money so hey, Fra- i try to Fra- do you have do you have like within your reach could you show each kiss cover within my reach of course not i did not come prepared mm. i don't think because I remember getting... Well, the, Mark, I, you've got to have them. Are they within your reach, Mark? I'm just making sure that I'm not missing one. That's all. Because I did the four that he had at the expo. Right. And then there was the original one. I'm just going off the fucking top of my head. Right. Yeah, it's so funny. I'm looking around, though, without going and digging some out of boxes. And it was so funny. I thought about doing that, but I thought, ah, we won't need those. So if you if you could, you know, send us a picture of all the the covers. And I tell you what, because I think it'll help because we're going to when when we're all done, we're going to let you plug whatever you want to plug. And, um, you know, get those covers up. We, We can post them. And I can just tell everybody that all the ones that I've got from Brian, I really, really like. He does a really good job, and and I'm a I'm a poster and Kiss magazine snob. So yes, he I've is. Been very happy with with uh, what you've been doing, and and I Thank encourage you. everybody to uh, to go seek these out. So and really and that's another it. and another selfish reason I want to make sure that I haven't missed one <laughs> because you didn't put them out. But it's not like when we were kids when. You know, there was one out at the, you know, the newsstand and all my kiss buddies, 
and this is this goes way back to the 80s and even 90s. We'd call one another and stuff, going, "Hey, there's a new hit parader all kiss thing out," you know. And now, right. like, if someone's putting them out online, like you are, well, you may miss it. You know what I mean? Right. Well, we've got the the first issue came out and it had 24 cards and one chase card that we originally released at the Kiss Expo a couple of years ago when the Fraley's Comet reunion happened. And yep. then we did two and it had six individual covers. So same content inside, but the front and back covers were, were different, different images. And um, with this remaster, we're going to have a cover that I painted that's very comic book style. And then we've got four other covers with that one so and then the next issue the number three they'll have six covers as well obviously if you want to collect all six covers thank you so much if you don't you know anyone you pick the interior content will be the same but the way we do that is so many people like to get the cards you know a lot of people just want the cards or they want one magazine and the cards so my thought was to try to alleviate some of that feeling that you're just buying the same thing over and over was the alternate covers. It's like, well, you can collect the different covers, and then that way you get more cards and you're not buying a thousand of the same thing to finish your card set. Because like I said, with our license, the only way we could release the cards is with the magazine. So we put three or four cards with every book you buy. So that was the theory. And then with number two, we did 24 cards. And then with this remaster, we're actually doing 24 brand new cards as well. So, you know, I'm definitely getting the cards out there. I mean, we're definitely been able to do them just not in the traditional packed sold sense brian let me going back to um and i'm not asking this to open a can of worms but going back to the ace poster book that had a lot of issues to get completed a lot it did um no question can Why? can you do you want to can you elaborate on the hurdles you encountered, what you would do uh, yeah, different, absolutely. what you would do different Honestly, next time. I, and well, to be honest with you, there are inherent challenges, and I'm not, I'm not, I'll answer the question directly. But those problems that we had with the Ace book stemmed from basically the same problem we've had with with other things that we, when you do a magazine, like let's say a variety magazine and you've got an article about Anthrax, and you've got an article about Metallica, and you've got an article about Kiss, and you've got an article about New Kids on the Block, because obviously they fit in there, too. Uh, totally, Mike. The, the guy that's got the Metallica article doesn't deliver on time, and you've got this great Guns N' Roses article that's the same length, you know, with a slight adjustment, you can throw it right in that hole and get it out there, right? No big, no harm, no foul. Metallica goes in next month. Not a big deal. But the right. problem we ran into, even with our horror magazines, is um, you're really playing you're playing inside baseball, inside baseball, inside baseball, almost. Because if you're doing, let's say, a, a, a Night of the Living Dead, we did that for the 50th anniversary of the film. They, the film company asked us to come in and create the, the book for that. And that was so cool. But the thing is, Every single article, every single interview, every every bit of esoterica. See how I brought it around like a good comic? Um, okay, has to right. be tied, <laughs> yay! Has to be tied to that subject. So if you've got an interview that you're chasing or a license that you, you know, you've got to nail down or, or just a person you need to nail down to get some content from and you need that content, problems arise. Now, with the Ace magazine, all the licensing was obviously done. I don't ever do anything until the licensing is obviously squared away. Um, but sometimes when somebody says they have a certain thing that they'll have access to or you have access to a certain person and then things come up, you know, for whatever reason and you don't get that access in time, then you're stuck. And that is exactly what happened with the Ace magazine. We had um, issues with getting all the content that we needed in the time that we had either anticipated or been told that we would. So, I mean, that's, it's gotta be that's the most honor I can give you, you know. Yeah. And it, well, whenever, it's whenever, you have, whenever you have a project and you're, you're, whenever you have a project and you're relying on other people to do their part, that's when it gets hard. Right. And to an extent, you have to do 
with smaller projects or niche projects, there's nothing wrong with, you know, doing a pre-sale to sort of gauge, you know, interest, see, you know, if you want to do certain perks, things like that. But you also want to make sure when you set a pre-sale that you can deliver on time. And with with a, a couple of these, it has been tricky because we've been promised A, B, and C, and then A and C show up, and I'm like, you know, gosh, guys, I'm going to really need B to, to do what I said I was going to do. And, you know, I take the brunt of that, and I accept that because I'm the one making the magazines. But there are times that it's gotten frustrating, and not just with the Ace magazine, and I'm not pointing fingers at a certain person or a certain situation with Ace. The Ace magazine, to be fair, was a perfect storm of, of hiccups. It wasn't all any one person's fault. And, you know, some of that p- fault was absolutely mine. I, To be fair, I won't take all the blame because there were other people involved. But to say that it wasn't at least somewhat me, I was the one taking and setting schedules and trusting that everything would happen. So... Right. Well, let, let, let me ask you, and I'm not looking for specifics here, just very general but comments. But you want social security numbers of everybody that screwed up? Is yeah, exactly. Exa- right? exactly. <laughs> um, how did acquiring a license from ACE compare to acquiring a license to KISS? Um, I have found that acquiring a license from anybody or any company is absolutely not like acquiring the license from any person or any company the last time you did it. I mean, honestly, everybody has their own approach. Some people handle everything through one simple entertainment lawyer. Sometimes there's um, more of an informal discussion that comes to a contract. Sometimes there's, you know, certain ways that they just that are handed to you and go, this is the deal. And then there's sometimes where I'll hand it over and I'll say, this is the deal. And then you go back and forth. And it's just different. I mean, to be honest with you, I'm really, I'm really lucky because I, I love the guys. I love the band and the relationship. And I'm not, I mean, obviously I would be saying this if it wasn't true, but truthfully, it's the best, it's the best situation ever. I love working with Kiss. Everything that we do, after I've got it put together and designed, I send it straight to Gene. And then Gene and I go back and forth, and he approves it or, you know, whatever. And he's never not, luckily so far, has never not approved anything the first time, which is pretty cool. So maybe I haven't screwed up yet. But it's it's been a really fun ride because um, it's really not been hard. They're real, the hurdles have just been usually finding content or or locking people down for interviews because we all have lives. Is that, is that yeah, it? Yeah, no, no, that's a good answer, good answer. Um, have you considered doing a Peter Chris poster book? Sure have. And I've talked to Peter about it, and it may happen. Now, now I won't say right now why it's not happening, because Peter's got his uh, time uh, allotted to something else, but... It's not my place to talk about what Peter's up to. Sure. But, um, Peter, Peter's, Peter's working on something right now, which I'm just excited to know that he's working on a project. And that project is, I was told, going to take precedence over everything else. So we'll just see what that is. Maybe he's maybe his project is a garden. Maybe he's putting in a garden. Maybe he's putting in a doggy door. I don't know. But we'll see what happens after that doggy door is installed. Or maybe whatever. he's recording two for all. <laughs> <laughs> Twice as shitty. (laughs) No, maybe, you know, fingers crossed, maybe he's actually recording that rock album he talked about many years ago wanting to do. That would be fantastic. That would be awesome. I can't respond. He's got a great voice. He really does. Yeah. And I've heard heard the rumor that he's recording something. So, who knows? We'll see. You know, the thing is, anytime you're, I feel like you're a creative person and you're creating, and uh, if we get more more stuff out of anybody from KISS recorded, I think, hey, we're lucky, we're fans, and obviously we can either like it or not like it, but hey, if you're a creative person and you're making, I'm just all for it. Oh, yeah, I am too. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to get into that KISS controversy over new KISS, old KISS, but... You know, 
in my opinion, <laughs> I love, I, I really do love all eras of the band, and I don't say that for safety. I genuinely do. I mean, I think Asylum's a great record. I think Destroyer's a great record. I think Monster's a great record. What I was going to say was, you know, when, um, like, Dress to Kill, Hotter Than Hell, and all that stuff was coming out, I mean, they were throwing out albums almost as much as the daily newspaper was coming out. It was like, album, 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 album. I really wish that that had happened around the time of, of Monster, because I feel like with what Eric and Tommy were, were providing and with where Gene and Paul were, there were some great records that we just didn't get, and I wish we had them. But that's just my opinion, you know, as a fan. I really would love to have seen that that quantity go way up where the quality was. Well, yeah. Brian, that that could have been possible even if you just look at the Gene Simmons vault. There was all kinds Bruce. of songs. I mean, there's some the really fact, cool stuff in that vault. There, but but on a serious note, much like Cheap Trick has been hammering out records. Um, over the last 10 years. Kiss could have easily put out at least another one or two. I'm with you. Matter of fact, uh, uh, that's how come I'm not hangry today here, guys. I actually uh, had dinner before we started today, so it's nice. <laughs> so, not, not used to this. Yeah, I know. I, you know, maybe that's why I'm a little bit more mellow and yawning. I'm all fucking... Fu- I'm He's in a food fat. coma. <laughs> yeah. So, but seriously, when... When, when I'm on my way home from work, um, I have a on my iPod. I have a, you know, all my Kiss playlists. And t- today's uh, all day. I was listening to the, you know, the uh, Sonic Boom Monster, all that, you know, era. Which also Tommy, of course, has the Art of McCartney on it, and has the R- Ramones cover and the live cuts from Kiss Forty. And anyways, it's a it's a really great playlist. And I was thinking that same exact thing today, Brian. These records are fucking great. I just wish there was they more. They really are. And there yeah. are so many detractors that are just, they won't accept that Tommy Eric Kiss, that if they would listen to it, there are so many tracks on those albums that absolutely could have fallen right off of Rock and Roll Over. Oh, amen. I, I say that all the time. I say that all the time. Absolutely. It's like, it's, it's crazy how much they really tapped back into that. And uh, like I said, I just wish the frequency had been there. I would love, you know, obviously as a fan, if they'd give me an album a week, I'd smile and take it. But, you know, they're, they're people, they're creative. And I know even just in the small little realm that I live in, I don't want to, you know, I paint covers for magazines and things like that. I don't want to paint every day. Some days I'll paint and it's shit. Some days I paint and I'm like, oh my God, my hand works pretty well today. I should go ahead and finish this while it works tomorrow. Um, and it's maybe everybody's not like me, but at least with my creativity, it does come in spurts. And I'm not saying that's their way. I mean, our I think a lot of people do. And that's you know, the hard thing. Brian, Brian, Brian to what we got. Brian, going, going back to your, you know, how about, and just throwing it out there, how about an all drummer edition of, of, of a kiss magazine that, that could be really fun. Um, that would you know. be really cool. The problem with a lot of things like that, and I'll just I'll just put it out there, um, we we only have access to certain things through the license that we can do. Um, there are parameters, you know, because there are so many people making kiss things. Nobody wants to step on each other's toes. That's probably one reason. And the other reason is I have to work with the content that's available to me. And there's a lot of content available to me. It's like I would love to do nothing but a Creatures of the Night era mag or a nothing but rock and roll over. But the problem is finding an abundance of photos and the content that doesn't overlap from somebody's book that, you know, most KISS fans have or something like that to the point of redundancy. You know, if you get too much of that esoterica redundant, it, it, it's in its redundancy. What's the fun? I got to use the word again. I did shoehorn it in there, but I went ahead and went for another esoterica. I, w- I would imagine, Brian, one of the other challenges would be the more you bring other people outside of official kiss into a, a poster book, the more you might have to acquire additional license. Meaning, if you Absolutely. if you want if no you question, wanted Eric if you wanted Eric Singer Eric Carr and Peter Chris, and didn't want to use whatever was in the 
KISS archives because you wanted to go to Peter Chris and get some exclusive stuff from him, he's going to require a license from you. Eric Carr's family sure. might require. So all of a sudden, you've got three times the problem of dealing with people. Right. And there, there is absolutely the logistics of it. And I, I don't make any um, bones about it. We're not a big operation. On the creative side, I, do, I, I design every single page myself. I want it a certain way. And um, there are only so many hours in a day. So I only and, and running the business side as well with my partner, who's my wife, we we handle all the she handles a lot of the business side. I handle some of that, of course, but I'm in here creating and there are only so many hours in a day to acquire licenses, hunt for photos, talk to this person, get this OK, run this approval. It, it becomes a lot, you know, because even just putting out a magazine with a small crew. Is a, is a challenge, but trying to work within certain parameters of legalities and licenses, it can be quite daunting. So, guys, s stick with me as I, I bring up this what-if scenario. Brian, what if you had six years to make the ultimate KISS poster Jeez. book? <laughs> <laughs> okay. what, would it, what would it include? And how many pages? You mean if I didn't have any restrictions? <laughs> Other than oh. Other than the like only illegal. restriction is you've got to complete it. The only restriction is you've got to complete it in six years. Okay. Well, wouldn't the question yeah. be can you? <laughs> I don't know. It's not even a real Honestly, question. I just felt I, like being an asshole. Great. No, I think, you know, something like that would actually be a challenge I would love to go with. Page count. I don't know. I think I would probably <laughs> turn to a uh, book before it was over with, but I would love to go album by album, year by year, and break the whole thing down with um, sort of commentary from inside the band and from without to build a picture that would just show the complete progression. That that would be, I guess, my ultimate goal. I think that would be really cool. And, uh, you know, you could start at the beginning. There would obviously be a lot of stuff that we all know, but I think bringing in other people to get their view can make it really interesting. I think there would be some really I'd, – I'd look for some really weird interviews, you know, engineers, uh, you know, things like that. Maybe, you know, that, that one stage manager that we haven't talked to on that tour, you know, why would – you know, find out why this, this prop that was not designed was taken off after two shows, all that shit. I would love to be that guy because I'm that much of a kiss nerd. So that's, well, that, that would be the ultimate, sure. But – trying to make something like that happen not gonna happen i i, I don't think it, it it would be we would need to build kiss cyclopedias is what we would need to build and i'm yeah. gonna go ahead and own that word so nobody steal that right now just be clear <laughs> gene will well okay so then no, let me see let no, me say to you. Be sure. nobody else run the gene with kiss cyclopedia <laughs> well let me let me say it to you a different way if you had to choose one kiss magazine that's come out in all of the years, and it can't be one of the ones you've made, but one of the classic Kiss magazines. Which one, in your mind, is the best one of everything that's ever come out that you aspire to keep working to bring your quality to that level every time you make one? Wow. Um, hmm. I, you know, I, I don't know um, which one magazine it would be because there are always... In the back of my mind, I will, I've got a huge library where I'll go pull the Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park magazine and I'll fan through it. Or I'll pull Kiss Mania out and fan through that. And I'm like, oh, I love the way they did this here. Or I love this. And then I'll even go through, um, and I've talked to Dennis Wallach about this. I will look at the way he designed the album themselves and the sleeves. And sometimes if you really look... I, I probably put more thought into it than necessary, but if you look at every single page of the magazines that I've done, especially number two, every single thing in there, there's something that I tried to make it new and fresh, but it harkens back to something. If you look for it, it's sort of there like an echo, if that makes sense yeah. without me saying yes. well, I, 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 You know, I try to do what we've done before, 
or do what they did before. But to an extent, I know repetition is cool and we're all nostalgic. So I try to find something and drop, always make sure if you like cinnamon, there's always cinnamon in the recipe, but it's going to be a different, it may not be a cookie this time. It's a cake, you know, something like that. Right. Brian, Brian, my only complaint, now I'm just nitpicking here because what Tommy's Whoa. question made me think about something. I think, in my opinion, and, and I've got over a thousand Kiss magazines. Go ahead, Tommy. Get your little bell. So um, my my two go-tos still are the grooves. Yes, With that's what I was thinking, the grooves. Those are now, really cool. One of the reasons, and Brian, this is my nitpick. Please don't take this personal. I'm sure it's it's I already all, have two like. No, no, I, I I'm sure it's 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 pure money. I, the the poster stock on the grooves was pretty good. It wasn't magazine paper quality. Don't get me wrong. You did a fantastic job. I even said that earlier. But the the, the posters are very thin. Whereas they are. There's yeah. actually a logistic reason for that. Then I don't take it personal. I wish the posters were thick like the covers. I don't know if you've noticed, but the cover, especially number two, we found a new paper, and it's like really, yeah. really thick. Yes. I tried to give it the not tour book, but close to. It's definitely a lot more substantial than your yep. standard magazine. I would love to be able to do a much thicker stock poster, but there is a reason because we do. The way the because they're done the way they are and the way they're folded inside the magazine, every time you increase your poster stock, instead of a magazine laying flat like this, it's going to lay like this and start to get bulkier. And it became an issue with just the bulk of the magazine. And the printer and I went back and forth, and they decided they wanted to show me these papers. I looked at those papers, you know, it, it gets boring, but the bottom line is. We chose that slightly thinner paper simply because of the folding process and how it's going to lay in the magazine. Yeah, that's the uh, truth be told. No, that makes sense. Yeah, I, that the, makes the sense. posters are super cool. I'm just saying, though. No, but I, I, I wish the posters were as thick as the covers, if we're being honest, and I wish they weren't folded. But, you know, what are you going to do? I don't yeah, know but if you noticed, but I did go back to them after the first one. And if you notice, the posters are only held with a single staple. Yeah. I did, instead of all the staples going through the poster, that was a really big deal, and they had to sort of re-streamline the way they bind the book to try and avoid, as best I could, screwing the posters up with more holes. So I know I, a lot of people probably didn't even notice that, but that was something that was really important to me because I hate those holes when you unfold it. But you have to have fixed them in there somehow. You know, as 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 a Kiss poster geek, self, uh, self-described self Kiss poster geek, some of my favorite kiss posters came out of magazines there was some of those old super team ones that they were huge there's one i think the picture's from philadelphia 78 it's the one the halloween one if you know where it, and it's in gene's handwriting it's it's very big and um and it's just something like happy hallows eve on it or something and it's got all their fake autographs on there you know superimposed on there but and it's a live shot and that's that's really cool obviously the grooves one have those uh, rock and roll over era live shots, um, you know, with the orange smoke on the, uh, on yeah. those are those are just freaking incredible. And also too, I mean, let's let's give uh, why we're giving props to those two. The the first Music Life All Kiss ones too had great posters and super heavy stock. Those you can't you can't look away from those either. But I, I that's one of my big passions is is our, our posters and Kiss magazines. And well, you forgot to go individually and talk about all the great posters that I put out. So I'll wait for you to go ahead and do that. <laughs> I, you look, I've, I've got all yours. Uh, you know, I may have one. Go ahead, do your thing. I, I may have one already. Hey, you got Mark to stand up, um, Brian. Um, before before we we wrap everything up here have you you know thinking back to classic 70s kiss magazines have you thought about making a i don't know the a parody fun poster book that is the tabloid style of oh my god gene simmons dies in car crash you know that type of you know it's so fun. i actually had that um, that magazine out not long ago i think it was this week the one where they all died and they were replaced by uh Imposters. Yep. That was a great issue, wasn't it? Yeah. Do you have that? That one. That's awesome, right? 
I would love to do something like that. It, it just all goes back to time constraints and how much it, the time there is in the day. I think something like that would be amazing. Now, I will the say this. Is um, thing, getting it done is enough. Just, uh, I'm sorry? I said the idea is one thing, but getting it done is another. Exactly. Now, as far as fun gimmicks, I, I, I don't want to give too much away, but um, if people are familiar with the other stuff we do, like we did a George Romero issue, you flip it over on the back, so on the cereal box, there's a George Romero mask you can cut out and, and make. On, um, and with Kiss, we did the cards. And with the, the second Kiss magazine, we did the cards, plus we did the six covers. And I keep trying to figure out how to one-up myself each time. So with Kiss number three, we're actually putting something else in the magazine with the posters that you can interact with. If that, and that's the hint I'm going to give you. You will actually um, uh, inter- you will take this out of the magazine, and it's an interactive thing that you can uh, play with. So there's your hint. And so the problem is going to be now with number four, I've got to come up with something else, although I've got an idea if they'll let me well, do it. Well, Brian, so you we'll might see. You I'll, might... I'll you might know this. Did Mad Magazine trademark the back cover trifold? To my knowledge, I don't. I don't think the trifold is is trademarked. And it's funny. I've, you know, things like that. I love that type of stuff. And something like that. Might I, be I, you know, as I'll as honest, as, I about hidden pictures. I, as as a kid, you know, I, I love that in Mad Magazine. Although, yeah, absolutely. And something like that may show up, but I will say that something akin to that is absolutely going to show up in the third issue. I uh, pitched it to Gene. He was like, yeah, this is great. Run it by everybody else. And they liked it, so we're doing it. But there'll be posters, but there'll be something else. And it will it will fold out, and you'll have to figure out from my clues what it is. But I think it'll be fun. Let, and, you know, that, that's what we hope for. I, just, just, I, love, I love those Cracker Jack box things. Just a quick, so quick question. When Gene said run it by everybody else, who is everybody else? Isn't Gene enough? to say yes or no oh sure no, absolutely no i run it through gene and then everybody else on the team takes a look at everything team meaning the kiss team or your team mm-hmm. okay no no it goes to you know gene paul doc okay yeah yeah but gene's my i always send everything to gene first just because that's the relationship i have you know gene and i you know have <clears throat> you know, going back and forth and, and on, on everything I've worked on, and it works really well. It's been a really good, you know, process. How so, about yes. how about a how about a Gene Simmons money bag poster book? Which you, I'll just tell you, honest to gosh, the original idea was when we first started Phantasm was each issue was going to be about a different person. Or, or license or movie or movies. We started with George Romero. We did a Linnea Quigley, who's a, uh, a actress. She's known as a screen queen, if you're familiar. And then we did Night of the Living Dead. And we were actually going to do Gene Simmons, a book, a magazine, Gene Simmons. And then we decided to just uh, go ahead and do the Kiss poster books. But it was actually talked about at one time to do a, a basically an issue about Gene. And who knows, maybe down the road we will, but we'd talked about you know maybe all the influences that he had had all the stuff that he'd worked on you know i still think that there's enough there that that man has done outside of his makeup over the years you could easily fill a magazine oh maybe yeah one day we will no. yeah but I'd, I'd want it i'd look at and see that's a slippery slope for me because i only collect kiss it's got to be kiss themed because I, I people would, you know, back in the day when Gene had, you know, his the family jewels and like Paul with the, you know, his Puma sneakers. And I, I if it's not kiss, I zone out. I, I the individual stuff does does nothing for me. Hey, I, I know we're going to be wrapping up soon. And, and guys, please just bear with me because it's not often I get to talk to a, a fellow Universal fan. Why have why hasn't Hollywood? done the creatures of the black lagoon creature of the black lagoon movie now i know you can say they technically kind of did what was that what was that movie a couple years ago when all the fucking awards it was basically creatures of the black lagoon but it, it wasn't creature shape of black. Water, wasn't it what was the it shape the shape yeah the shape of water or whatever right. it was. 
But anyways, you know, I, what I do know about that is um, on the horror side, my my big thing that sort of got me directed into drawing originally was uh, Frank Frazetta and this guy named Bernie Wrightson. And Bernie Wrightson, if you're familiar, created this character called the Swamp Thing, and he drew Batman and all these horror comics for DC. And Bernie was my guy. And I started collecting Bernie Wright's and original art years before he passed away. And one of the originals that I saw that I really wish I had purchased was he was actually tapped to do some concept art for a creature from the Black Lagoon film. I mean, this was probably a decade ago. So from what conversations I've had just with him, you know, obviously years ago, there were at least they got into the concept stages, but it just never happened. You know, but they also tapped him to do um, Werewolf by Night. You know, Nicolas Cage was, I guess, apparently at some point attached to do a Werewolf by Night, which is a, a Marvel comic. But there was a big interest in a lot of this stuff at one time. Universal and Marvel were apparent. Apparently, there were a lot of projects that were stalled and just never happened. But beyond that, I don't know. But I did at least see some creature concept art. Unfortunately, it didn't work for me because he had a tail. I didn't mm, like it. It'd have to be yeah. the exact creature from you know from from the from the normal u- universal world. But that and story just plays in. Enough, well, I, here's why I hope that. they do it be, because I think. Granted, I don't know if the coronavirus thing is going to affect the, but I haven't seen it yet. But the the Invisible Man looks fantastic. I and, have not seen it. But I would like to, I'm going to give it a try for yeah. sure. Well, anyways, I just God, it was about a month ago or so. Um, the creature from the Black Lagoon was on. I've seen it a million times, but I don't know why when I was watching it this time, I'm like, this so needs to be redone because the story is a fucking great story. Now, I hated I hated the creature walks among us. I mean, I didn't like where they took the series. I thought it was stupid. It did get a little silly, didn't it? Yes. <laughs> it but that original movie, if you guys have never seen The Creature from the Black Lagoon, that's a great fucking, you know, universal monster movie. The The plot's really good. Um, God, what was the guy? Matter of fact, when we were in in um, uh, Orlando uh, at the Spooky, the guy who played the creature was there. He was uh, one of the guys who uh, uh, wore the suit. Edward or whatever the hell is his name. I can't remember. Rico Brown. Rico, that's it, right? That's it, Rico. Rico um, I was thinking Eduardo. Rico. Um, yeah, he uh, he was at the, and I was going to go get his autograph and stuff, but the line was fucking super long. But, man, again, that movie's got everything. It, it was really oh. well done. Um, it was, you know, scary for that time. And that creature outfit, man, just his. And if you guys ever noticed, too, I think a little bit of what Gene has on the current kind of inspired by the creatures from the black lagoon in a way is the, the chest piece is, is a little bit, you know, it's funny. You mentioned that, uh, my friend, David over yeah. at UD replica designed yep. Jean's new costume. We have a brand new conversation in the remastered poster book. And some of the things that Jean sort of pulled from are mentioned in the creature creature might come up. Who knows? But yeah, that's, cool. it's funny. Cool. You mentioned that. Cool. You know, there's been quite a few iterations of this newest costume. You know, the the chest was a solid piece, and then it was broken into, a, you know, a two-piece. And there, there are reasons for all that, and David explains a lot of that. And I think that interview, if you're into that sort of stuff, um, there's a really cool um, sort of play-by-play of Gene's costumes of, of, you know, evolution in this current this current uh, d- dragon suit. So, there you go. You. Brought it around to Kiss. Look at that. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us, Mike. I, I assume we're uh, going to be wrapping up here. Uh... Yep, we are. Uh, let, let's let here. Put on your Gene Simmons hat and plug. Well, boys and girls, you can go to you can go to phantasmmedia dot com. That's f a n t a s m m e d i a dot com or phantasm dash media dot com. Either one will get you there. And we do horror magazines, horror. That's with an eight. And then we also have the Kiss magazine, the Kiss poster books. We have the official Ace Frehley magazine, and we just released a line of Ace Frehley enamel pins, and. 
Those have been doing really well. We've got some a new um, black star field design. They should be landing any time. They were obviously delayed due to the coronavirus situation a lot longer than we hoped. Um, it, you know, this this thing is has really changed the our whole dichotomy, hasn't it? I mean, the world is, is just different right now. And I just I hope that everybody's taking this seriously because, you know, every time you, you know, slough off your responsibility and you go out, even if you think you're healthy, you unwittingly could kill somebody. I mean, I know that sounds really overblown, but, you know, if you're you walk past some guy that doesn't have an immune system and you are asymptomatic, he may be, you know, dead. So stay in your houses, watch your movies, buy some magazines and read them. I'll mail them to you. It'll be great. But go to phantasmmedia.com. And, uh, guys, thanks so much for having me. It was a lot of fun. Um, Thank you, Brian. It was a lot of, it was, there were a lot of meanderings. I was definitely the Neanderthal that started a lot of them. But it was fun. Thanks. It was quite an esoteric conversation. It was very esoteric. <laughs> Tommy, sting. <laughs> yes. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Brian. If you run Thanks. Out of it, if appreciate you it. To, I'm always around. All right. <laughs> take 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 Actually, care, I'll man. Probably, uh, I will probably take you up on that. There's a few more things I want to talk to you about. So. I can't believe we had Mark sit through a science fiction discussion. Hold on. I will put it this way. Hold on. Science fiction. Yeah, I guess we talked. Yeah, about you Doctor you Who you you love girl. classic horror movies. That's completely different than sci-fi. It is sci-fi blows generally. I'm not a that in, so we could talk about anything. Did you guys? Exactly. I, you know what? I, I was noticing I was yawning a lot more than it had nothing to do with our guest. I'm like, God, that was fucking good, man. I'm like, <sighs> we we <laughs> we got to witness a food coma. No, that's not a food coma. No, no, Tommy has lived it. Tommy has lived it. <laughs> yeah. I, the food coma it involves. Having my phone ready to call nine one one. I have a defibrillator in case I need it. And and and, and, and you and you've refreshed yourself on the Heimlich maneuver. Yes, and I and I checked into this pulse. Until we get to until we get those four things, we ain't in a food coma. <laughs> it's like Chris Farley in the bear skit when you're having a heart attack. <laughs> I was and, and, speaking and, of that, my, my kid today, my kid's like, Dad, I, I saw that fucking thing for the Ted interview, where, you know, where you got me as Farley. Oh, he was like, he goes, Dad, you have, have no idea how long. I, he goes, I had it on my lap. I had to keep looking away every time I pulled my screen back up. He goes, I was fucking in tears. <laughs> nice. So four stars, Tommy. You got my kid, uh, you got my kid rolling. Hey, if Ian likes it, we know it's cool. I tell you, you know what? Out of I, obviously, I, I had a lot of people IM me about that. Every single person mentioned that. I, some of my friends, like I had to get the, the, that off my screen because I couldn't look at it. I, was I, laughing I, I had somebody like legitimately go, "Is that a real photo?" <laughs> That's the nicest compliment I can get. Uh, Tommy nailed that one, man. That was good. So, anyways, our guest was excellent. Up, Brian did a yeah, good job. Always, yeah, Brian's so, a nice guy. So, he, Quality products. Home, home, homework wise, uh, do you have any of uh, any of his poster books? Ace, Kiss, any of the other ones, the horror ones with the H, not the W. Um, Mark, Mark's actually working with him on some horror books with W. Those will be. God, I hope. Yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Mark, 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 and Lisa. <laughs> Come on. We're the we're the after dark crew. Um, no, have, do you have any of his poster books? What do you think of them? Um, what would be a cool poster book? I'd love to hear. You know that that discussion about I the classic seventies ones. What would you like to see a poster book of? All creatures, Mike. All creatures of the night era. That would be very that would cool. be that would be super fucking cool. You know it. It, here's one that I know would be kind of uh, split the Kiss Army right down the middle, but just for memory's sake, it would be cool to have an '80s Kiss poster book. Tommy, look at the time. It's uh, you know what been a great show, guys. Thank you all for uh, for tuning in this week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> doesn't work, Mark. We know you've been fed. We know yeah. we know you're not cranky right now. You you, you showed your but cards. No, there's, there's there's people that would like that too. I think that you should you should do Look, all. There's of people who like toe jam as well. Okay. <laughs> Keep your sexual preferences off the show, Mark. Oh, hold on a second. That was always my favorite thing Chuck Barris used to do. He's like, now that act, I love that act. Then again, I like gonorrhea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chuck uh, you, Barris. You, you, just... you, you, you might want to explain to the young listeners who that is you just referenced. Who, gonorrhea? It's this guy. Oh. <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> He'd meet him in a he'd meet him in an alley. <laughs> <laughs> Chucky baby, I used to love the mask, the unma- the unknown comic, the unknown comic. Mm-hmm. That, oh that, my that, god, that's that that's that's when you would come on. From... Da, 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 da. I got the fucking uh, Gene Gene, the dancing machine. Yep. Oh, mm-hmm. um, that's that's that you, show was. You, you'd come pure home, you'd, gold. you'd come home from school, and in the afternoon you'd watch these game shows that were so politically incorrect. I, the the stuff that was being said by the hosts and the guests was just match game, the gong show. You know. Liz and I were just saying that. Did you notice on the match game? Oh, plus I, I watched a cool documentary about it. They were all drinking. Oh, They're God, all yes. smoking. And did you notice they kissing each other all over the, you know, constantly. And I'm like, see, it was better then. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm gonna get it. It was better then because everyone got to fucking do what they wanted. Everybody was having fun. It was better then. No one was all fucking up in arms. They they had everyone from fucking Charles Nelson Riley to you know to to, to Rich, Richard and Brett Summers is just the funniest fucking broad. Oh God, ever. she was so so hilarious, so bad and so hilarious. But that's what I mean. And, and she, even, matter of fact, on this documentary, she even talks about it. She was yeah, drinking vodka all the time. She was, we were all fucking drinking back there and smoking and, you know, and, you know, oh, it was just, it was just a great documentary that I saw. It was, and, um, and, and it was uh, like all those shows, the match games, the gong show, Hollywood Squares, all ad libs. Everything was yep. ad lib. Nobody was given a script to read in, re- in response to some question or some comment. You know, I just remember it's like, holy crap! What did Paul Lynn just say? Did he really say that? <laughs> you know. Well, you know, it was funny on that documentary that I watched, because sometimes it would be seem so obvious to play, you know, to say your dick or something, that you know, on. But they were told, no, you can't say, you know, ass or dick or you you couldn't say, you know, crap. You had to say. If you ever notice on, on on match game, people will say tinkle a lot because you, they told you right up. For, but the contestants were told you can't talk about urination or defecation or anything. You you can't say those words. That's how come sometimes. That. Well, but I'm it's, but it's funny, though, too, because you can tell that's what they wanted to say. And it oh, would have yeah. made total sense. And where people would say, you know, something stuck out of his pants or blah, blah, blah. And you say. Uh, his nose because according to this documentary that I watched they said you can use nose you can use finger you can but you can't you know use these other words so it's just kind of kind of funny how that 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 you learn that, that. that that reminds me of George Carlin's classic seven dirty words you can't say god when yep. that, when that came out that was the most funny thing i'd ever heard oh god yeah Shit, piss, motherfucker, concoctits. Hey, you fuckers, I'm going to go tinkle. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you're absolutely right. It, again, look, I, it was just better back then. I, just people didn't have the hang-ups. I just, I'd go back there on a fucking heartbeat. It so, was, it was but hilarious. But, yeah, but, you know, here here you are. We're a bunch of, bunch of teenagers, younger than that even sometimes, coming home from school. And sitting down and watching all that stuff, and nobody cared. Nobody cared. Yeah. I, re- I remember watching Match Game all the time. Match Game and Gong Show. The Gong Show, for some crazy reason, like, you can't find that anywhere. They've done a really 
I don't obviously the licensing or whatever, but match game on our, we have a, we have a channel called buzzer. Yep. And, and we, Liz and I, matter of fact, what time is it up? Oh, it just ended about 15 minutes ago. Liz and I watch a good, you know, when I get home from work, we usually have, especially now because the news is coronavirus and weather, coronavirus and weather. So, you know, now we've been watching like a couple hours of match game, you know, when we're eating dinner and stuff and just the kids love it too. They totally, you know, they like it just as much. It's because it's funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, it's funny too. Still seeing Betty White on there, (laughs) you know, whereas just about everybody else is just at that limit, you know, they're probably deceased, but uh, you know, it's funny. Every time I I see Charles Nelson Riley, all I can think of is Lidsville when, uh, (laughs) Was he Hoodoo on Lizville? Yep. I love that show. You know, I I found out that that was only like one season or something. Yep. That made a big impact on me. I, I Mike, you and I remember years ago talking about it because I was a big Sid and Marty Croft fan too. All those were those shows, Sigmund and the Sea Monster, and there was and, so and, much and, drugs right. being done by the people HR making Pump those and shows. Stuff was by far, oh. my oh. favorite. Man. Well, come, come come you know come on a a kids show called Lidsville. In the seventies, <laughs> not about drugs, really. <laughs> yeah. Not 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 he somebody who takes drugs, falls into a hat, and spins into this strange reality. Well, it's not about drugs. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> oh my god, that's great stuff. But it's great because Anyways, as a kid, uh, as a kid, you didn't know that. I didn't realize it was no, about. It, it, it wasn't until you got into like high school and you're like, oh, okay, now it makes sense. I mean, even even as a kid. Watching like Paul Lind on Hollywood Squares, I'm like, I didn't know he was gay. Yeah, well, it, it's funny you say that too, Michael, because the other day when we were watching um, uh, on on uh, Match Game, well, Charles Nelson Riley was gay, but yep. one of the questions was something about somebody being a queen or whatever, and they were all laughing about it. And you know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, Charles is gay, and he's Here's where I talk about about he was right in with it. You know what I mean? He was yep. he was yep. being just as silly and funny as as everybody else. That's what I mean. Just everyone had to seem there to guard down or not looking to be offended. It was just I don't know. Anyways. Um, so anyway, you got I... your homework, you know where to go. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. If you're on Spotify, follow us. If you're on iTunes, leave us a review and a rating. We appreciate it so much. We're getting closer and closer to 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. It'd be Excellent. great when we can pass that milestone. Um, awesome. We've got... We're not terribly far away from 300 or 400 either. No, we're... We're what? 377 or 78, something like that. Wow. Well, can we guys. make it? Will we make it? I think so. We're getting close to running out of kiss to... topics. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> it's it's yeah. um, all right. We've got guests lined up. It's like, all right, you're not going anywhere. Get on the show. You've got nothing to do. You have no excuse for not being available. So we're getting guests. So Not that we need them. Not that, you know, we're, you love us, just us alone. Lisa will be here next week. I, I, all kidding aside, I mean, I've not talked to you. I may not be here next week. So Lisa's here and Mark's not. And where's Mark going? You're not a lot out of the house. Eh, some people aren't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I may have some things I need to take care of on a Tuesday. So we'll but see. what Liz is changing the weekly schedule up on you? I, I, it, it may she be needs, something. She like needs that, taken so. care of on a Tuesday during the show. Well, you know, we get out of here. Yeah. It's, not, it's not like we you got to go. Record it's not like you got to go eat. No, no, but it. I look. Now I'm sitting here angry. in my fucking basement. I, I want to go upstairs. All right, and that's honestly, it, guys. And honestly, too, I, I do think there's some uh, dessert issues upstairs. So. <laughs> Come back to food, doesn't it, Tommy? Comes back. To I food. knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. He's got There's that. Always a food angle. You know, always. there was that movie Six Sense. Well, Mark Six Sense is. I know there's food upstairs waiting. You can just tell it's you know, been moved out stairs. onto the table. Yeah, 
he knows that his neighbor three doors down is baking a cake. <laughs> oh my God! All right, I love that we can laugh. Oh, Got to be able no to laugh lie. every week. <laughs> what was it? Was it the stomach and the? I'm weak. I'm weak with nourishment from <laughs> and stripes. Remember oh that? God. This is Mark, the year Mark, thing. Mark, you could go week on nourishment for months and still be fine. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> no, Larry, right. it's a few guys over here. <laughs> that, 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 that's it, guys. We're done. We're out of here. We'll see everybody next week. You love the show. Go to itunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks. Download your free free copy of the KISS School of Marketing. 11 Lessons I Learned Working with KISS. The number one downloaded business book on Noise Trade. Go to books.noisetrade.com slash Michael Brandvold. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. So you love the show. Go to itunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks.